Uh, my name is Joseph Oguji. Uh, I'm here with my wife, a privileged pastor in this great commission. Uh, this, uh, before this child came, we had our last baby in 2012. And two years after, there was uh, an abdominal com uh, complication. An issue came up that needed uh, a medical attention. And we went to see a professor of gynecologist. And my wife was, uh, uh, upon investigation, she was diagnosed of ovarian cyst. And uh, the ovarian cyst was operated, but when she was opened up, uh, the professor called me and said, see, uh, there's a problem that uh, he needed to conduct a whole hysterectomy. Uh, the, the, the ovarian needed to be removed and some other things needed to be removed just to uh, enable her leave. Just a minute. The doctor said he will do what? Hysterectomy. Prof. A, a prof. See, can I call it? Total removal of the womb. That is T-A-H. Yes. yes. Total abdominal hysterectomy. Yes, sir. That is, the whole uterus is removed, the cervix is removed, removed. fallopian tubes are removed, ovaries are removed. removed yes. That, that is exactly every single thing that makes a woman reproductive. And, and that was done for what purpose? Just to enable her leave. To make her yes, leave. Because it was a systemic damage inside of her. And that needed to be carried out just to make her leave. Medically, at times, the doctors say, let her lose the womb and save her life. Because the most vascular organ in the body is the womb, the uterus. Has more blood supply than any other part because of the, of, of the fact that it carries a child. So it can bleed. That's the only organ that can bleed the owner to death. Am I communicating? So the doctors removed the whole thing. Yes. To save her life. Yes. All right. So everything was removed. I obliged. And everything. When was this? That was 2014. F four years ago. Four years ago. Everything was removed just to enable her leave. And uh, it was difficult for me to tell her thereafter that uh, this was exactly what was done. But I summoned courage and told her this has been done on you. Uh, she has this pen chance for a baby girl. And I said, we can adopt. So we all agreed on that. But again, after we forgot completely about having a baby. Uh, because that was medically, it, uh, the doctor told us it cannot work again, and we agreed. I saw the womb and everything removed, so there was nothing like there was. It was an evidential material to show me that all of this had been done. So we agreed, and uh, it was done. To, uh, this year, eight we started on the eighth of January, when we started our twenty-one days fasting. I, I was at uh, I, I had a seminar presentation, so I, I was at Kaduna, and I met. I did it at Mando. Uh, Mando, a branch of the church and daddy raised a song that captured my soul I was deep yearning for something inside me, a change, a shift in life, uh, spiritually and I sent him a test immediately that I needed to see him, I think it was an email that I needed to see him, that I had this conviction, I needed a shift in life and he obliged me, so I came on the 17th and when I was coming I carried along my wife uh, we came and uh, daddy prayed for us and uh, Paul emptied a total oil on us. And he said something. That anything not working in your life. He was pronouncing it upon my wife. Anything not working in your life. From today it shall begin to work. That we should go and make exploit. In the new area we are posted to. So we never took it anything. But I thought it was just a normal prayer. That he prayed for us. Uh, then February, uh, she started complaining of some issues that uh, is pregnancy related. But this, uh, this is a condition that she cannot take in again. A woman that is wombless. I was afraid. Uh, I thought it was other challenge, so I had to put the call to the father and to some of our. You put, you call the father. Yes. <laughs> call the father and some of the and the elder sister to alert them that uh, there is uh, she's complaining of something now. Uh, and again, they just said, "Okay, let's watch." So it became an issue and it burden to me. But two months again, the issue progresses, and it was becoming like a semblance of a baby in her womb.
So I asked her to go for examination. And uh, when the investigation was conducted, I was there. We saw a baby running inside. Uh, inside where? Inside where? I told the doctor the medical history. So the doctor said, because my NHIS is there. He said, no, we are not going to handle this on primary issues. It's not going to be a secondary. It's going to be a tertiary medical uh, uh, issue so that they can monitor her. And uh, I said, no problem. And uh, we st all started that way. And uh, six, five months, six months with antenatal started. And all of a sudden, uh, on, on the Wednesday, on the Wednesday of last month, on the 10th of last month, the doctor now called me uh, a surgeon that he needed a team of other surgeons to handle this uh, peculiar case. And uh, should I avail them the opportunity to go ahead? I said, no, they should go ahead. That is not a, it shouldn't be a monetary challenge. So they, they summoned order and they, <laughs> and they opened her up. They were going to the theater. It was on Wednesday and I was going to the church. They asked me to donate the blood. I said, I have no blood to donate. That God will take care of her. Daddy said something that when you mind God's work, God minds your work. So I left her to the church and after the, uh, the church section, I called and they said, thank your, your, your wife has delivered a bouncing baby boy. With a weight of 4.5. A weight of 4.5 kg. kg. 1 kg above the upper limit. The upper limit is 3.5. It wasn't a womb they saw. They saw a pouch that is film-like in structure. That housed the baby for the nine months. was no uterus, no cervix, no fallopian tubes, no ovaries. But God said, let me show the world. I believe that was why God made it to happen by surgery. Because if it delivered normally, he would have thought it's a normal thing. But God said, open up and see what I did. I created something to carry the child. I could have given her a new womb, a new ovary, a new fallopian tube. Let me just create something. Let me do it differently. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Will you lift up your two hands everywhere you are? Will you, will you lift your voice and just worship God? What kind of God are we serving? What kind of God are we? Pray in the spirit, worship him. Are you just looking like that? Worship him, worship him, honor him. The junior. Listen to this. He just told me the name of the surgeon who did the total abdominal hysterectomy that removed the womb. He was my teacher in the university. A professor of surgery. He's a radical surgeon. That was the guy that can do like 10, 13, 14 operations in one day. Yes. He removed the whole thing. And then you talked about when the surgery was being conducted to bring out this child. You said what happened? The, the nurses ran away. The nurses ran away. They ran out. When they saw, when she was opened, 
the, the only surgeon that remained that was begging them to stay was a redeemed doctor. That was a, I think the supervisory surgeon or so. Was, he was speaking in tongue. He said, what is this? And entered. When they saw that the child was housed in a pouch, a container, a bag that God created, and, and it was not a womb, the nurses ran away. The junior doctors ran away. And who told you that the removal of your womb is the end of your life?